This is the BX Bowler coming at YouTube once again to talk about the time situation with the New York Yankees. And I'm going to start off with the winter um, 2009. Now, in the winter, the Yankees acquired Curtis Granderson, an outfielder that has power and he has speed. Like Brett Gardner, with the exception that Brett Gardner doesn't have power. So. Also, we lost Hideki Matsui, Zani Damon, Milky Cabrera, Phil Coke, and Edward Ramirez, and some other players that I'm not going to mention in the winter also. Now I'm going to talk about 2010 season currently. Now, the Yankees are in first place in the AL East right now, so they're good. Um, they're at a pretty good spot. Two games above um, the Tampa Bay Rays. Because of Alex Rodriguez's three home runs last night, a lot of people think he's um he's taking steroids because of that. But he's just just got a, um a good night, and yeah. So they're six games in front of Boston, also because of that game. They're eleven games in front of Toronto, and they're like thirty something games behind in front of Baltimore. So pretty much Baltimore would never be a threat like they were in two thousand because they suck. Toronto would never be a threat, because, even though they were a threat in the beginning of the season. And the only thing that's good about Toronto this year, Jose Batista stepped up to the plate, but obvi obviously it's been doing nothing. And that's basically it with them. Boston, they're prone by injuries. Jacoby Ellsbury just went back down to the DL. So they're not a threat. Tampa's a threat because they're two games... In, um, they're two games back behind the Yankees, and they won a auspicious start, like they were in 08 when they went to the World Series. So hopefully, they won't be a threat for any longer. So, of course, um, the Yankees won yesterday. I'm watching BX Balls watching a game right now. They're still losing, I believe, one nothing. Um, I think it's the top of the eighth or the top of the ninth inning. It's one of these, and it seems like right now the Yankees might be losing this game, but of course, all Yankee fans know there is such thing as a rally. The Yankees like to rally a lot, so hopefully we can get a rally in our bones. Top of the ninth, one nothing. So, talk, I'm also going to talk about the lineup right now. The situation with the Yankees lineup, um, of course, Derek Jeter is at the number one hole. Pause. Um... The second hole, pause, Nick Swisher or Curtis Grandison either goes there. It depends on who's pitching. If it's left-handed pitching, Nick Swisher. If it's right-handed pitching, Curtis Grandison. Or if it's or if Nick Swisher needs a day off, Curtis Grandison. Or if Curtis Grandison needs a day off, Nick Swisher. So they alternate a lot. Now, the problem with the DH position this year is that at the beginning of the season, since we lost to Deki Matsui, we acquired Nick Johnson the former Yankee before. Nick Johnson maybe like in the first maybe like six games of the season gave us the power we needed. But he didn't get the job done. And also, as Yankee fans know, Nick Johnson's not gonna be back for the rest of the season because he got injured. Something I Hideki Matsui would probably never do in the beginning of the season. So we needed a DH and we can't keep putting Jorge Posada at the DH, even though Jorge Posada stays unhealthy. But we can't keep putting Jorge Posada at the DH and putting Francisco Savelli to catch just about every game or alternate between them two. So we acquired, the Yankees acquired um, Lance Berkman from the Houston Astros in a trade that sent some minor league people down that are really that much of importance. And Lance Berkman, he's not really getting the job done yet because he's not, he hasn't adapted well to the Yankees as of yet. And also Lance Berkman just got injured in the beginning of this game. So, yeah. Also, during the trade deadline, the Yankees acquired Austin Kearns, and he can do well. He's an outfielder from the Cleveland Indians. He can do well against left-handed pitching because Curtis Granderson doesn't 
fare well against left-handed pitching. And we also got Kerry Wood because before the All-Star game, the Yankees' bullpen was subpar, so to speak. And Jabba Chamberlain wasn't getting the job done. David Robinson was a little shaky. The only person that was really doing their job was Chad Gordon. And Dasmazo Marte would be doing the job if he wasn't injured. And Alfredo Alcevez would be doing the job if he wasn't injured. So we got we took the Indians closer. Now they don't have a closer now. Kerry Wood. And he's doing pretty well. Oh, and also we got Boone Logan earlier in the year. And we got Javier Vasquez in the winter. Boone Logan's doing pretty well. And we called up this minor leaguer, um, Dustin Mosley. He usually came out of the bullpen. But since Andy Pettit got injured, um, he's been pitching pretty well also. To update you guys on the game is ninth inning, two outs, one nothing. Corey Besides just struck out to make it two outs. It seems like the Yankees are going to lose unless whoever else is coming up hits a home run or, or something. But that's the situation with the lineup. Now to talk about the pitching rotation. As I said before, Andy Pettit's injured. The captain Derek Jeter is up right now. Um, Andy Pettis injured, so we filled in we filled in his spot with either Sergio Mitre, which he he's doing pretty well, and in some cases he he's a little shaky like David Robinson or David Robertson. Um, Andy Pettis injured, so we filled in the position with Dustin Mosley. Now the game against Boston, <laughs> my man's Dustin Mosley was showing that pitchers. Also could be fielders, barehand making a barehanded throw to first, making an outrageous catch. Hold on, Yankees just lost, so they're one and a half games in front of Tampa right now. They lost the game one nothing to Kansas. So we go back home to face Detroit tomorrow at Yankee Stadium. That's besides the point. Sorry for getting off track, but. CC Sabathia has been pitching well in the rotation. Of course, he's the ace, so to speak. Still, he was have has been a little shaky. Um, even before the all um, All Star game came, he's been a little, a little shaky. He was on an auspicious start. Um, some Yankee fans remember that him and CC, like maybe a few days apart, almost pitched perfect games without walking anyone. Of course, that's what a perfect game is for you non baseball fan people. He almost finished the perfect game, and then I really considered him like the second ace in the Yankee lineup. A.J. Burnett, he's getting better right now since Dave Island actually came back. That other pitching coach, I don't know what he was doing with him, but it wasn't working. He was, A.J. Burnett was thinking that, oh, maybe I'm on the wrong side of the mound, so maybe I should step off far from the mound, or I'm too far from the mound, and he didn't know, so he was... Um, he was a little shaky in the beginning. Now he's getting back to form since Dave Island's back. Pitching well, even though he took the loss in this game. And going back to the bullpen, um, Chan Ho Park, I don't think is on the team anymore since we called up Dustin Mosley, and Dustin Mosley's doing better. Most Yankee fans remember Chan Ho Park for being on the Phillies and how he did well in the 08 World Series. Chan Ho Park has not given the Yankees that this season. Maybe in the beginning of the season. Nah. Nah. Not this not this time of the season. So that's basically the situation with the New York Yankees right now. I'm going to talk about their future right now. Now, 2011, ESPN analysts are reporting that Albert Pujols might be coming to the Yankees in 2011 since the free agent. So, well... This 2010 free agency winter, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's basically the only big name I know for the 2010 free agency. Albert Pujols is a is a very good baseball player. He brings power, and um, I'm not sure about defense, but I don't know how the Yankees are gonna fit him into the lineup. They might put him at temporary DH sometimes, because we do have a Gold Glove first baseman. And his name is Mark Teixeira. He was also second in the running for AL MVP last year. 
Derek Jeter was right behind him. So we do have a gold glove first baseman. And also we do have Lance Berkman, who can play first base, who played first base in, in Houston for um its tenure, or for his tenure in Houston. So that's basically it with the situation with the Yankees. So hopefully they go to the World Series. I think they might. They don't have many threats. Um, trying to think about any threats. AL East, not too much except Tampa. AL Central, they do have to watch out for the White Sox, um, Detroit, Minnesota, the three main Central teams that have always been the contenders for the world for the title. Um, AL West, of course, um, Anaheim, of course, they will always be a contender with the Yankees to go to the World Series. Um, ALCS matchups, countless rival rivalries. Um, yeah, no one in the wild cards really making any noise right now, with the exception of Tampa, since the Yankees are the best team in the league right now, and they are first in the AL East, like I said in the beginning of the video. Now the NL threats, they still have to watch out. Number one is the Phillies. I do not want to see the Yankees face the Phillies next year, since the um the Phillies have Roy Halladay and he's been pitching out. Out, outstanding, like first four games at the beginning of the season, all complete games. He was four and zero. Yankees should have got him in the winter. But that's basically it. So Yankee fans, you can tune in to Yes Network, MLB Network, MLB.com, Pro Sports Daily. I definitely would recommend any sports fan to go to Pro Sports Daily. Um, ESPN.com also has reliable stuff. So, that's basically it. I like to shout out my man J Free and also my man C Free. And this is the BX Bowler once again as a Yankee fan signing out.